Hey, hallo. So I once wanted to become a teacher, so I'm using the blackboard now. Um, you know, it's because uh, um, it's a talk about Git, and normally you will have to make many drawings to explain things, and I was just too lazy to uh, make the drawing on the computer, and I, I know graphics, but I don't know how to do this. Um, it's about um, packaging software for um, Debian in my case, but I hope that it's also useful for, for other distributions and especially for cooperation between distributions. Um, it's about um, Git, but and uh, a tool and two tools on top of Git. Um, but the ideas should be um, usable also for Mercurial, Bazaar, or other um, distributed version control systems. Um, okay, I've done Debian packages now for um, something around a year and tried to become a Debian developer once. Um, working for a small web company in um, eastern Switzerland and at this company we are using um, Debian packages um, for deployment. So if we want to deploy a web application, put it in a Debian package, up get installed and it's up there and every web developer in-house can also make up get install on his developer machine and has it running. Um, I'm interested in who are you, what's your experience, who has ever used Git or is actively using Git? Fine. Um, other distributed version control systems? So everybody is familiar with distributed version control, that's fine. Uh, who has done De Debian packages? Thanks. About half of you. Or for other distributions, RPMs? Also very fine, so I don't. And Topkit, <coughs> anybody has used Topkit? Okay. I, I'll talk about it. So you know um, uh, the, about packaging only. What you do is um, we, you, has, you have the source table of the upstream um, software. You download it, uh, unpack it, and put a Debian folder inside. And there's all the magic which uh, builds the package and has all the meta information for Debian. And Eventually, you'd uh, have to patch the upstream code also, and that's what you are doing for packaging. Um, so we have um, three th things now. We have um, <coughs> upstream tarball. We have um, the unpacked upstream and we have Debian slash and it would be best to track all these three things and um, it's also good to have all these three things in um, the version control system I'd like to have the tarball in my version control system so that every other, everybody else working on this package um, does, doesn't need to go to the upstream homepage, find the tarball, even if I have um, uScan, the automated system for Debian, which downloads the tarball, there's always a chance that the site is down right now, or I've also encountered um, upstreams who um, distribute to release another um, source tarball with the same version number and you, you have no, no way um, to know that you have got another upstream tarball now than the other developer. So it's a good idea to, to have it available in your um, repository. Um, you have a back backup of it and um, if you are offline, you can still work on. Um, you can you make a Git clone of the packaging repository when you're online, and can still work with it when you're offline. You have the tab all available. 
And the unpacked are upstream. There are um, packaging groups in Debian, uh, for example, um, Java, which use uh, subversion. And <coughs> most of the time, they have only the Debian directory in the subversion. And when I want to uh, work on a package, I have uh, a make target get auric or something like that. And this uh, goes to the home page, downloads upstream. And for Java packages, normally you have to repackage because they have binary things inside. Um, does the repackaging and makes this every time somebody else wants to work on the machine, uh, on the package. And of course, this could go wrong. It would be fine to have a canonical um, upstream in my repository so that I know that somebody else working on this package has byte to byte identical the upstream directory. Um, so, the upstream tarball. Um, how can I part it in my repository? Um, I could, of course, commit um, the tarball as it, as one file, but um, that would be a waste of space um, and it doesn't really help me much because if I want um, if I want to inspect it, I have to go to this um, commit, get find the file. There is a, a nicer tool for it. That is, um, I write the tools down here. It's pristine tar. Um, I have, who did it? Um, Joy has, yeah. Um, Debian developer. Um, so the magic of pristine tar is that you unpack the tarball, commit everything what's in the tarball to one branch, and then tell pristine tar, okay, look at this branch. There you have all the files, and um, now I want you to save all the other meta informations that are also in the table but could not be represented in this branch. Put these meta information somewhere, and when I ask you, you will get me back the original table, byte as byte as it was. But I do not commit the table, I do commit the files inside the table and some additional information. I think um, permissions, um, timestamps, some um, information that could not be represented um, well in the Git repository. <laughs> and the um, Pristine Tarball um, makes a separate branch in the Git repository, also called Pristine Tar. And there are, it makes for each table I commit, there is one file with all the meta informations that Pristine Tar will need to recreate my tarball. Um, so, I have now three branches. Um, this is I call this branch where I put uh, the unpacked um, upstream source, upstream. Um, there is this uh, pristine bra, pristine tar branch, branch, with the meta information normally I don't access it, it directly, but only uh, with pristine tar. And um, by convention, um, the Debianization branch with the Debian directory is called the master branch. Okay, and that's a drawing I wanted to make. I start my um, new repository, and first I start with the upstream branch, commit. Um, Oh, here's the upstream branch. 
make a tag of um, the, with the version number code upstream slash um, 0 0.1 is the upstream version of the software and here there are all the files from the tarball um, should make this and from this I make a, a branch and call this my master branch where I put um, my Debian directory and do all the Debianization. Now when uh, the next upstream version comes, um, I do another commit here with a new upstream tarball and do a merge in my master branch in my debianization branch and in the most ideal case I only need to um, update the change log here in the debian directory and can could make another upload <laughs> and the nice thing is also now I can use um, all the tool chain of git to inspect the differences between the two upstream tarballs um, I have the differences also available on my master branch and here I also have um, the debianization commits. Um, there is another tool which can use this <coughs> commits on Debian to um, create changelog entries so that when committing I already write what will end up in the changelog. So, um, for this thing, there's also a tool that helps me with it. This is git build package. <coughs> and git build package. Sorry. Um, no, git build package is as well the name of a tool and the name of a tool set. And the tool git build package um, uses this repository now um, to build um, the Debian source package, which I will upload. So git build package calls pristine tar, give me the um, auric tar gz. That tarball, which I need um, to upload to Debian. Then um, it creates the diff file between the upstream branch and the master branch, which by convention should only contain the Debian directory. And okay, and, and it runs, of course, um, the Debian tool chain. Um, with all the Debian um, tools uh, which um, build packages and work on the Debian directory. So, um, with um, the help of git build package and this um, standard um, layout of a repository, I could now um, collaborate, for example, with my um, sponsor and uh, instead of uploading um, source packages <coughs> somewhere on my server or on mentorsdebian.org um, I can just point him to my git repository and look there everything is inside there is the tarball you just run git build package um, hyphen s to build the source package and you are done and this way, he not only has the source package, but also the history, and he can also make um, commits. So when he wants to correct something on my package, just make a commit, sends it back to me as in distributed version control. And so the other tool, um, another tool from the git build package suite, Git import auric. 
So that's the tool um, which I fire up when a new, a new or the first upstream version comes. Git import Oric unpacks um, the upstream tarball, commits um, the content to the upstream branch, makes another tag at the upstream branch with a na with the version number as name, and um, commits the tarball with pristine tar, and makes this merge to the Debian branch. And I can continue to work. Um, there is a nice feature with, uh, which helps a lot um, for Java packages, for example. With Java, you have every time um, a lib directory containing the jar files of all the dependencies. That's a custom in the Java world, and it's hard to teach upstream n not to do it or to distribute a pure source tarball only containing source files and not containing binary or pre-compiled stuff. So um, every time I need to repackage my upstream, so what I do is I make a normal git import oric without any repackaging and have the original tarball um, here. And immediate, immediately afterwards I make, I make another import but this time I use the filter option of git import oric and tells it um, filter out all jar files, but filter <laughs> out uh, the docs directory because it's uh, pre-compiled, filter out um, compiled um, generated source code, and I make, and I tell, here at the first commit, I tell um, git import oric, don't do the mer merge to master this time, just make the commit. I make another um, commit, upstream um, 0 0.1 plus gfsg1, uh, indicating that it's a repackaged tarball and this is then merged to master. So I have not only the repackaged filtered tarball, I, for reference, I also have the upstream tarball, and if I like, I also have a diff between these two so that I can just look up what did I filter out. Um, yeah. For example, this uh, filtered tarball, it's also a work to go th through the a big project and find all the pre-compiled files, if there's C stuff inside, there are um, cache, automate stuff files. And um, so I end up to repackage uh, DFS G2 and 3 and 4, have all these. And this work could also be used by um, other distributions, by uh, Fedor, to, um, and just take the tarball from the Git repository. So, next tool in the Git build package tool chain, which I already mentioned, is Git Debian change log helper which uh, this just takes this commits here and um, generates um, a changelog file, a Debian slash changelog file for, of it. You may have seen packages uh, where in the changelog very nicely is indicated author in square brackets uh, some commits, next author square, bracket, square brackets, and this is normally done with um, git um, DCH. Um, okay, that's until now. That's uh, nice packaging. Nothing so complicated. Complicate. Now we have packages where we need to patch upstream, and that's where TopGit comes into. Um, TopGit is created by 
a Czech guy who also runs repo.crcz, Petra Bordis, a Git contributor. And what TopGit um, does, um, it saves in every branch, no, one step more, um, TopGit uh, manages patches in the form of branches. Every patch is represented in a Git branch. And these Git branches are in some kind special because they have two additional files. The first file in these branches is so that um, top that is just a plain text file with the names of all branches this branch depends on. So normally um, if I base my patch directly on upstream, <coughs> this would just be <coughs> upstream. Um, but if I have a patch which depends on another patch, um, there would be in the top depth file the name of the branch representing the, the dependency um, patch. Or I could say there are three patches that need to be applied first before this can be applied, then there are three lines with branch names. And so, top git um, can apply an algorithm to look up um, well, my, my patch branch is based on upstream and um, it looks in the history. Upstream, when I made the branch from upstream, upstream was at commit abc. Now upstream is at commit dch. Um, so up, there, something happened at upstream which is not Merge back in the patch branch. My patch isn't um, is isn't um, current anymore. Isn't actual anymore. Uh, it needs to be updated. So um, I can see with tap git summary. Um, it gives me a list of all the patches and tells me which patch has dependency branches. Uh, whose changes are not yet merged in the patch. <laughs> and this comes in very handy when I have a set of 10, 20, 30 patches against upstream. A new upstream version comes and I need to update all these 30 patches. And um, so I don't, um, I don't miss any patch and it tells me and I can use um, the git commands to do all the merging work. And I think git is very good at that to help me with merging. Um, another nice thing of top git is it eases the collaboration with upstream because there's another file, the second one, um, top message. Um, where I can write, um, like in an email, the name of, or, or the, the subject of a patch and a description. <coughs> and with uh, one command, top git mail and patch name, I can just send this patch to an email address, uh, presumably the address of the upstream ma mailing list, and top git will create an email from the subject, the top message, from the, com from the description and takes the patches um, as patch files um, and send it to the mailing list. So now to um, one step, how do I um, use the patches now in my Debian package? Um, we have a new um, source format in Debian um, version 3 which allows me to use Kilt um, as a patch manager and now TopGit 
um, allows me to e export all the patches in the same format as killed users. So there is tg tokgit export. I say it um, which branches do I want to export because sometimes there are patches which are in my repository but which I do not want to have in my package right now or which are outdated, not yet ready yet. I indicate which patches I want, um, give it a directory and Topkit will write in this directory one patch file per patch branch and um, the ser serious file that kills needs to apply all these patches and this is compatible to the new Debian source format. So I can <coughs> just um, use it as it. Okay. Um, all this um, stuff here is now my personal workflow to do um, packages, but there are many others with slight modification. There are people who um, base their patches on the master branch, for example, or um, make an, a third branch to, um, to merge all the patches in one branch and merge this branch into the master branch. And for this reason and for other reasons, there is a web page. VCS hyphen package.org, which was started by Martin Croft, also a Debian developer, a Debian developer. Um, and his idea is um, that um, distributions should co collaborate more and use at best um, one distributed version control system and share patches from one distribution to another distribution and um, make it easier this way to uh, do all the work with packaging. And on this pa page and uh, the mailing list of this page, so there are discussions on how to this could be achieved because um, the stuff is still um, fairly new and there is no um, canonical workflow now which is um, recommended as, as best practice and therefore um, okay my um, aim now with this talk is to get you a little bit curious about um, <coughs> the topic um, of uh, sharing um, version control with distributions and um, of using um, a distributed version control, especially Git, um, to do packaging. Um, I've seen most of you already use distributed version control, so this aim is already reached. Um, the next step would then be to just check out um, top Git, see what it can, um, try um, the workflow, um, see if it works out even with upstreams, even if I have to um, maintain two different versions and to maintain patches against two different versions because one version is in old stable, the, the other one is in stable, the next in testing. Um, so that we could come up in the next year with a workflow which is tested, tried, works, simply to understand. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. Uh, what do you describe here, heavy reliance on Git as being the single version control system? Is it feasible to use other version control systems like Bazaar, like uh, Mercurial? Yeah, of course. This is also the aim of a VCS package that it, the workflow should work with um, all the distributed version control systems um, because um, mostly all the distributed version control systems now um, share the same feature set. Um, they all have branches, they all can merge easily, they all have tags. 
So um, if the workflow works on Git, it should also work on Mercurial or Bazaar. It's only that I know only Git and I know only of top Git, um, but I don't know if there are uh, similar tools um, for Mercurial or Bazaar to manage patches in the form of branches. But that would be ideal if um, I could use also the tools that do merging between uh, different systems so that I as a Debian package I use Git but um, the Ubuntu guy uses Bazaar but we could still share our commits that would be ideal. Okay and about the, the patch um, with um, naming conventions. So you name the branches that are distribution specific, for example, Debian slash patch name. Or if you have um, a feature that you have added and you want to be submitted upstream, the practice feature slash somewhat. If there is a bug fix that you um, want to share with upstream, bug slash. And that only convention that some names indicate that it's for Debian, some names that's for packaging, there is also still a need to come up with a set of common namespaces, which are understood by all. And how much of this convention that you showed up here today are already working, for example, at least in between Debian and Ubuntu? Um, they, th how much of these um, things I've described are already in practice between different distributions? I don't know of any collaboration between distribution using such a system. Um, it's, I know that I'm using this workflow and that it works, but um, I don't know if there is any collaboration now. It, it may be, but... I was expecting that of this between Debian and Ubuntu. Um, that's uh, something special, but I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, Ubuntu takes um, the source packages of Debian and either takes it as they are or patches them they import everything in Bazaar. Whole Ubuntu is managed with Bazaar, and um, yeah, they also submit patches back, but not uh, with the help of version control, with the help of uh, bug tracker, patch files, mailing list. So um, my distribution is based on Ubuntu, but it's more tough, and then we can't use, so we don't like using Bazaar and launch that infrastructure and we have implemented git build package on our side we absolutely love it but um, in essence what we've done is uh, we forked your Debian branch into our own branch so now we've got three different layers upstream Debian and our branch what's and your distribution so, sorry what's your distribution uh, Jolly Club Jean Jolly Club okay yeah, Basically, uh, of the different packages that we've modified, with 200 some odd plus, we've completely implemented the Git build package and made some modifications to Git DTH, etc., and working fairly well. But um, one issue that we've had is with the whole Debian packages infrastructure that Ubuntu tends to use. Um, is there any way of importing Debian packages so they actually appear as Git commits, which will make it easier for me to? Uh, manage, I guess, and then subsequently convert them back. Obviously, if you convert them back with the top kit, but is there any way to bring them in? Mm. Um, of course, uh, somebody could write such a tool and could run it uh, um, over the Debian packages, but there isn't yet. But doesn't, uh, you probably agree that Git build package makes the legacy Debian package infrastructure redundant? Oh, yeah, there's also a discussion, um, for example, to use um, Git repositories directly instead of Debian source packages. Um, there is even, um, I think there is, um, an implementation in DPKG source so that I can use um, Git repositories directly 
but this is still experimental and as I recall when I discussed this, um, they said that the implement implementation in DPKG source is already obsolete because the discussion is already about some other format. Uh, but it's in the discussion, yeah. Would be fine. Okay. Thank you.